Hello everybody. Last time we did a session on democracy, its relevance and various movements connected with universal enfranchisement and uh, equality. Today let us place this poem in the context of democracy and the need for democracy as expressed by Lanston Hughes. Let's go straight away to the poem. Democracy will not come today, this year, nor ever through compromise and fear. He very clearly and categorically, the speaker, says, if you wait for democracy to happen, keeping fear in your heart and making compromises, inferior adjustments, Neither will it come today, neither will it come tomorrow, nor ever. So we can't wait for something to happen, especially when it comes to freedom. We have to make it happen. So he's already asserting that you can't sit and wait patiently for democracy to happen. In the second stanza, he says, I have as much right as the other fellow has to stand on my own two feet and own the land. So again the speaker uses a very assertive tone and says, this is a matter of right. Does anybody deny you the right to breathe? In the same way, it is my right to be independent. To stand on my own two feet means being independent. To do things that I want to. If I want to buy property, I should be able to buy it wherever I can, wherever I want to. I should not be looking at whether, you know, I can buy it because it is in white areas or black areas. So I have equal rights as any other human being to own property, lead life as I want to and be independent. I tire so of hearing people say, let things take their course. Tomorrow is another day. I do not need my freedom when I'm dead. I cannot live on tomorrow's bread. Now he is, the speaker does not want to resign himself to things as they are. He wants to change things as they ought to be. So he says, I'm fatigued, I'm tired of hearing people say, well, one person can't make a change. Wait. Things will happen, things for the better will happen, if not today, tomorrow, have patience. So what's the use of having patience and dying in the process of aspiring for freedom or wanting freedom? I cannot live today on tomorrow's promise. Whatever I need, I need it today. Now this is a, you know, what we call delaying tactic. People normally say, Ivatila, Nale. So in this spirit, we start compromising on everything. Adjust markolti ve yalla dako. Murjana basal kutko veka jagrali solp adjust markoli solp adjust markoli anta aidu aru jana kutkolti ve. Adre jasti basgal na haaki na sukhwagi prayana marbe ko anno zuna adwandu hakko adar na wo keel be ko. So, I cannot live on false promises for the future. I need what I want in terms of expression, freedom of expression, freedom of a dignified life today and not tomorrow. Freedom is a strong need planted in a great... Freedom is a strong seed planted in a great need. The metaphor of freedom being a seed is used here. Swatantra in our bija vanna, now nedbeku. Adre, a bija molke hordu, gidwagi, maravagi, bedibeku, and tandre, niru, gali, surian kiranagulu, beku. Hagagi, a needir beku. If you just plant a seed, it's not enough. You need to feel the urge for freedom. Only when there is a great feeling that, yes, I need to live a different life will the seed break and germinate and grow into a plant. 
So it's not just enough to have the seed of freedom planted in you, you have to develop the urge. So there should be an attitudinal shift. For years together, for centuries, you know, uh, blacks have been told you are inferior, you are made to be ruled, you are made to be a slave. That's how you are made. You are a, brutal civiliz a brutish civilization. So brutally they uh, try to uh, control them by saying that you are inferior. Now if the, bl the blacks believed that for so many uh, you know, hundreds of years, they would never change their condition. But somewhere people started revolting because they believed they needed a better life. So that makes the difference. He very clearly in very, very assertive terms says it should be planted in a great need. And lastly, he uses the tone of irony, though he sounds very plain and casual. There's an undercurrent of irony. there. <laughs> Nodi, Nahu ille jivna martivi. Namgu swatantra beku nimtarane. I live here too. I want freedom just as you. Do you realize that I am also a human being? Do you realize that I also want freedom? I want to breathe freely like you. If you realize that, there will never be this conflict. So he closes on a tone of irony, though he is taunting the oppressors, oppressors very gently. By reminding them, if you don't remember it, please remember that we are also human beings. You don't treat us as human beings. You treat us as animals. So there is that undercurrent that he states here. I hope you enjoyed the poem. Thank you.